Hey ChemXL, it's Mrs. Heath here. We're doing some kitchen chemistry, all right, um, in this video about dilution. And to help me, I have my special science helper, Philip. All right, all right. So in this video, we're going to be going over um, just like what dilution looks like and what it means, and then we'll have a separate one about um, how to do the dilution calculation. So that'll be coming. Okay. Um, in this video, hopefully you'll notice that some things seem very repetitive, all right, and I'm emphasizing certain things over and over again, all right. Um, hopefully some of that stuff will seem kind of obvious. Um, if it doesn't, then it's definitely good we're making this video. And if it does seem kind of obvious, um, that's good, okay, and just stick with the video, all right. Um, some of these things are things where even if you get it, people write really weird things on like test questions later on. So I want to make sure that we're emphasizing the right aspects of this. Okay, all right, so let's get started. Um, just to start off with, we've got just a beaker here. It's a glass jar. We'll call it a beaker of water. And Philip's gonna add one drop of blue food coloring. Okay. Ooh, all right, now, look, if, really it is pretty. very pretty. Okay, and if we, I'll move this closer. Okay, all right, if we look at the food coloring container itself, go ahead and put that next to the jar, the container. There you go. All right, I'll notice it's a really dark blue. All right, in the container. Sorry, I got a bad camera angle here. All right, but what's happening to the color in that jar, Philip? It is settling down at the bottom. So it's down at the bottom. All right, is it still as dark as it was in here? No. No. All right, go ahead and stir it up. Let's get it more evenly distributed. All right, and what do you notice about this color compared to this color? This color is light up because I stored all this up, all the food coloring up. Okay. So. And we took all the blue dots, the little blue particles in here, and we spread them out in this huge volume, right? Okay. So when we space out the particles, what happens to the color? It gets lighter. All right. So that's just key idea number one there. It's about spacing, okay? If we space out the particles, all right, um, then it gets lighter. Yeah. All right, so we are going to use a stock solution today. All right, so we're going to pretend that this is 0.6 molar copper chloride. Okay, mm -hmm. remember 0.6 molar would mean that we have 0.6 moles of copper chloride for every one liter of solution. All right, obviously I don't have a whole liter here, so there's less than 0.6 moles, but if I kept it at the same concentration, all right, and distributed over a liter of solution, all right, the same concentration we'd have 0.6 moles. All right, and we're going to go ahead and just pour some of that into one large test tube. This is a little easier to pour out of this test tube than it is out of this jar. Oh, Mom, right. don't you think that's a little too high? No, it's good. Um, okay. All right, and you may notice in the video that it looks a little bit lighter blue here than it does here. That's because this isn't as wide, okay? So we haven't actually changed the concentration of this. All right, we just poured the solution from one container to another. That hasn't changed the concentration, all right? Um, but because it's narrower, it's gonna look a little bit lighter. All right, so we're gonna start by making two solutions. We're gonna do each of them twice, okay? So Philip, we need 20 milliliters, this one, okay? We need 20 milliliters of the 0.6 molar copper two chloride, all right, in each of these first two containers. Got it. Can I have the phone? You don't need the phone, Philip. Okay. We're fine. And let's make sure we're right on the 20. So we're using that dropper here. All right, you tell me when it's right on the 20. Can you get down to that level? Let's get on that line. Perfect. Okay, so you got 20 milliliters once. Okay, and then I'm gonna make the other 20 milliliters real quick here. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Two layers twice and I pour that in there. All right. And then we're going to do in these two, we're going to put 40 milliliters. Got it. So we're not changing the concentration. 
right? We're just pouring out different quantities of our stock solution. Is that, oh, too much. Too much. All right. Too much. Where do we put excess? Do we put in it back the in the stock? In the sink. In the sink. That's right. Bye bye. All right. Is that good? Still a little too much. How's that? That look good? Okay. Just the, this. Pour that in there. Pour it on it. And one more. Is that done? There we go. Okay, I can't see the markings, so you tell me when we're getting close to 40. Do you need a little bit more stock solution? Yeah. Okay. So we get a little bit more of the stock solution. In our container that doesn't pour well. Good. Good. Ooh, a little over it. Good? Oh, uh, no. But almost good. So key idea number one here is simply by changing the container that it's in or the volume of it, all right, um, that we're measuring. We haven't changed the concentration, all right. So it's important to understand that all of these are still 0.6 molar copper two chloride, all right. Um, a couple of containers have less of it, some have more than it of it, but the concentration has not changed. So what that means is that in our pictures here, I'm going to show in the first one, okay. Um, if we had 10 dots for every 10, or three dots for every 10 milliliters here, then how many dots need to go in that? It's, all right, so we got our six dots in there. So three dots for each of the 10 milliliters gives us six dots for 20 milliliters is what we have here. I'll make them a little bit bigger. Okay, and then this one has 40 milliliters over here, so tell me how many dots to draw. Three times four. He's working on multiplication, so. Three times four. Start drawing three for every line. 14 dots. 12. Okay. Okay, so we got 12 dots, right? Big muscle. All right. So we've got 0.6 molar, 0.6 molar means we still have our three dots for every 10 milliliters. Yep. Okay, so we haven't actually gone to the dilution part yet. Okay, now dilution is what we did at the beginning when we put that one drop of blue food coloring into that water, we diluted the blue food coloring. All right, it was really, really concentrated and we spread it out. All right, that was very uncontrolled though, so we have no idea of you know, the concentration of it or anything like that. All right, this game we're going to do this in a little bit more controlled way. So for these first two test tubes, I'm going to leave this one as it is. And then the one next to it, I want to make 40 milliliters of a new concentration of copper chloride. So we're going to add water to it and then try to figure out like what concentration have we made. Okay. So Philip, if I've got 20 milliliters and I want a total volume of 40, how much water do I need? You need to add on 20 more. Okay, that might be a little extra full. Oh yeah, that's a little extra full. There you go. So what is it? Is that walking still? A little over. A little over? Okay. Let me see. There. Still over? Okay. How's that? A little more. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead and pour that in here. And three, two, one. Pour it all in there. What? It's fine. Okay. All right. So, Philip. This started off with six dots, just like this one, right? Mm -hmm. In our picture. Did we change the number of dots? Have we taken anything out of there? No. Did we add any more blue dots into there? No. Okay. So tell me about the color, though. It changed. It because changed. Because we added clear or white stuff. When you add white, it tints it and makes it lighter. Okay. So kind of like with white paint, makes mm -hmm. it lighter. 
All right, so do you think that this blue looks lighter than this blue? Yeah. Okay. So now we have a volume of 40 milliliters. Okay. And we still have the same six dots though, right? Because mm -hmm. you said we didn't take any blue out, right? And we didn't put any blue in? Yeah. All right, so we're going to draw I one, two, blue. three. All right, draw three more in there. Space them out, get them up for the bottom too. Okay. One more. Wherever it looks appropriate. Okay. okay. Let's go get there. Okay. That's a little too big. A little too big? All right. So the point is we still have the same exact amount of, we'll throw a fancy word out here, solute, okay, the stuff that has been dissolved. All right, um, but we've changed the volume, okay? And now we want to know what this new concentration is, all right? So, for instance, there, all right, Michaela, pop in and say hi. There you go. All right, so now if we take a look at our diagram here, all right, the volume doubled, and these are now twice as spaced out, so the concentration has been cut in half, okay? So it was 0.6 molar, now we're at 0.3 molar. So by adding that water, we've changed the concentration, we made it lower by diluting it, okay? All right, this next one here, all right, we started with 40 milliliters of the 0.6 molar copper two chloride, all right, and we're going to try to change the volume. We're going to bring it up to 50 milliliters and then figure out the new concentration. Okay. All right, now in this one, notice that, Philip, do we have a 10 milliliter marking on here? No. No. We don't have a 10 milliliter marking on here. So the question becomes, how are you going to accurately measure 10 milliliters? Well, the thing is, the way we just diluted this first solution, all right, is wrong. It's not how you're supposed to dilute a solution. Once you've measured out your starting point, all right, in this case, the 20 milliliters, you don't measure the water separately. And I know some of you are like, oh, she's on this again. Yes, okay, just like with the molarity, all right, we don't actually measure how much water we're gonna add to this. So on here, on here, on this one right here, we've made a marking, pull it out, all right, where we had measured out where 50 milliliters is. So there's a mark on here. So we're gonna start with our 40, and we're just gonna add water until we hit that new volume of 50 milliliters. So it's not about the fact that we're adding 10 milliliters, it's simply saying we had 40 milliliters, we're gonna add water until it's 50. You wanna try that? Okay, pour real slow. If you go over that line, you can't undo it. Okay, just a little bit more. All right, and then stop there. Leave the dropper for the rest. So diluting solutions, all right, in a real lab setting, all right, requires uh, a lot of practice. Because if you go over this, all right, uh, you can't undo. Just like when you make the solution using molarity and we have this special volumetric flask and everything. If you, if you go over that line, you have to start over, okay? All right, so in our picture, in the 40 milliliters, we had 12 dots. Now, yeah. all right, we're at 50 milliliters, but how many dots are we gonna draw, Philip? 12. 12, all right, so go ahead and space out 12 dots in there. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so now we've got our 12 dots. There we go. Got our 12 dots in there and a grumpy face. Okay, we'll get to it, don't worry. I want to make a math problem. We'll do math problems later. Okay. okay. So we've got our 12 dots spread out and I'm gonna give a math problem to my students now. Okay. So in this one, we were able to say when we doubled the volume, the molarity got cut in half. Mm -hmm. This one's not as clear cut because we went from 40 milliliters to 50 milliliters. So when we started with 0.6 molar, we want to know what did that go down to. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys to try to figure out a way to solve that problem. Okay, there's a couple different approaches you can take. All right, um, and then we're going to check that answer. So we're just like if you keep going on the lesson plan, all right, you'll get to check that answer, and then I'm going to give you an equation that works. But to order, in order to understand why the equation works, I need you to try to work on your problem solving skills. Okay, so yeah. again, I'll bring it closer so you can see the problem. Okay. 
Can I turn this around mid video? No. Okay. All right. So here's our problem. We went from 40 milliliters of 0.6 molar to 50 milliliters of we don't know. So that's the number you're solving for. All right. What's the new concentration of this solution? Okay. All right. Thanks for sticking with us through the whole video. All right, Philip, say bye to mom students. Bye bye. bye.